Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here, playing more Kerbal Space Program, and we are going to Duna today, or at least we're, we're ejecting to Duna probably, but first I want to finish up the final thing, and I promise this is the final thing we're going to do on Moon with Jeb, Bill, and Bob, and that is Jeb is in this capsule, uh, Bob is holding on to the ladder, <laughs> because Jeb is going to take him up to the station, uh, so that we can pretend that these guys are ready to refuel anybody who comes by, even though we know better that nobody's actually going to come by. So, our computer is on, Jeb is ready to go, we're going to launch to the east, and in 3, 2, 1, go! Launch fairly, uh, strong over here, like this. I'm going to roll the ship around. So that down is down, and up is up, as we like it. Going pretty close to exactly east here. And uh, now it's boring, so I will be back when, we, uh, when we're getting up to the station. Okay, well, good news and bad news. Good news is we're in orbit, and we have a maneuver node in a little over a day. Uh, or, I'm sorry, a little over an hour. Um, bad news is at some point, Bill, I think it was, or Bob, <laughs> fell off. And, uh, I didn't notice until I was in orbit, and, like, I was able to quick, uh, I was able to, uh, what do we call it, time warp. So, uh, Bob's dead. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Your name will live on in the annals of first Kerbal dead in space. Uh, I blame myself. I, as I should, because I'm the one who killed him. Uh, but yeah, so we're we're not gonna we're not gonna wait for this. This is gonna be boring. I'm not gonna show you any more of this actually. Now that there's no there's no putting people in, Jeb's basically gonna dock this to the station, and that's it. You're never gonna see it again. Um, it doesn't really matter that Bob died, except for the rep hit I took. We are 12 days away from our Duna window, which means we need to start launching stuff into space. And the first thing we're gonna launch into space is. This one, which looks a lot like our Minmus Carbonite base. I liked that so much, I am uh, sending it to Duna. Um, there's a couple changes. One, I've got a distiller up here, which should allow us to convert to monoprop, which I found out the hard way I can't do on Minmus. Um, I am going to expand the Minmus base eventually, so I'm going to send up a, one of these distillers there, but I don't want to have to find that out <laughs> in uh, in Duna when we have people there. Um, Sparty Loha and Shiva are launching this thing up. TMS is going to launch the other ship, by himself uh, to, to dock with this guy once we get this guy into orbit. And without further ado, in three, two, one, launch. And everything's upside down, so let me uh, control from here on the right place. There we go. Got a little bit of a roll, not a huge deal. Uh, mostly I just gotta watch my atmospheric efficiency here, and as soon as it gets to 100, uh, again, I'm gonna throttle down the main engines and let the uh, solids do their work. And the solids have done their work, so I'm going to dump them, I'm going to throttle all the way up, and we are going to start turning over, not too much. And we're going to lose the drop tanks. And then we're going to lose the main engines here. <laughs> the main lifter engines. And the rest of it is all coming from these little dinky guys, which have a terrible thrust to weight. But at this point in our uh, journey, it doesn't matter. Also, I have auto strutter on here, and it is uh, currently strutting these guys to these guys. Um, when the time comes, uh, I'm hoping these things work with Kerbal Attachment System. <laughs> if not, I'm gonna I'm gonna module manage them. I'm gonna also put some down here um, for the. There's gonna be the the other ships gonna actually connect onto this guy right here. And that next ship is this guy, and before he falls over, I'm gonna go three, two, one, launch. <laughs> And uh, this is a weird ship, because he's basically, this is what's going to be landing on Duna. Uh, just with a lot less fuel in it when it lands. And um, also, without these on it. These are just to help get off of Kerbal. There is one staging event, and it's coming up as soon as we get horizontal. I could actually probably do it before horizontal. But now that we're not fighting gravity anymore, thrust weight doesn't matter. <laughs> and I'm going to lose those engines. <laughs> um, that's their entire purpose, was to help me get off Kerbal. Okay, i got a burn here that's going to get us a 2.2 kilometer difference. It's a tiny little burn. It is not for a day, but we have 12 days until the Duna window, so we're not exactly pressed for time. Uh, this is going to give me the opportunity to launch yet another ship. And that ship is the Satellite. He should have enough Delta V to make it all the way to uh, Duna and also fulfill 
Uh, somewhere on here, I've got position a satellite in a specific orbit of Duna. So this is the satellite that's ideally going to do that, and then he's going to allow us to get um, science from around Duna contracts because he has a thermometer, which is awesome. Okay, so we are going to turn on his computer. We are going to hit the space bar in three, two, one, launch. Okay, and he's in orbit. Uh, it's a pretty terrible orbit. Uh, 91 by 116. He's just, his engine's so powerful, I had a hard time stopping him in time. But he's still got 2,500 meters per second, which is more than enough to get to Duna and do whatever I want around there. And as we cruise along here, catching up to the Duna fuel lifter, you'll notice that we actually have completed a contract. And that contract is to build a new orbital station around Kerbin. As I, as I did on the way to Minimus, I cheated on this. I, uh, I built the station. Um, I also have a, a contract to put a station in orbit around the sun. And one uh, landed on Duna. And that is going to... The, the station that's going to land on Duna completes all of those contracts. Um, just free money. Who can say no? Okay, should be a tiny little burn here, 16 meters per second. Want to be as exact as possible, which means chase mode. And also means probably correcting that problem there. It's only 0.6 meters per second. Get out of the way, engineer window. Why did I correct it twice? You know what I'm going to do. There we go. And 3.3 kilometers away. Good enough for me. 34 seconds away. We can now, uh, let's see, we're going 48 meters per second. Should probably slow that down a little bit. Maybe not that much. <laughs> Not the most efficient engine to be doing uh, these maneuvers with, but it's the engine we have. And what we're going to do here is we're going to park next to the station. Try to get zero here. That's as close to zero as we can expect. Okay, now the station, I should have done this earlier, but oh well. Make sure this guy has plenty of monoprop in him. He does. We are going to take him off of here, and then he is going to arm and control from his claw. And he is going to come around this side and dock with it. So let's go ahead and turn our RCS on. Let's go up this way and backwards. I'm just putting everything so it's all in line. So he's as close to being centered as he can be when he touches on this thing. Looking good. Go ahead and grab on. There we go. Now we are going to switch to you. We are going to target this, control from this, and now it's all about getting these guys aligned and docking them. And we have a special requirement here in that we want to dock uh, so that our alignment is an X. And you'll see why when we dock. Although I need to make sure we're still there. We go. Well, we're docked. Now the reason I the reason I went uh, the X is so that these engines wouldn't go through these uh, things. But guess what? They do. So we're gonna have to undock again. <laughs> and then we're gonna have to back up. We're gonna have to actually align these guys. So it's on the plus. See, I, I think I think I was clever twice. I was clever in the in the VAB. I accounted for this in the VAB by putting those things on it at 45 degree angles, and then I tried to account for it again here. Okay, so let's go forward and come on, dock us. There we go. Now I'm going to disable this engine. I'm also going to, these, these fuel tanks are actually all empty now, and this one is not empty, but I think I'm going to empty it, because I want as much mass in front of the center of mass as possible, um, and ideally I want it all in this, so I think I'm just going to turn him up to 8, 
And then this guy has all the fuel. The center of mass should be in front of these engines. And we are ready to take this bad boy all the way to Duna. Um, also, oh, you know what else we want to do? We could actually add strut. We could we can move these struts. Um, let's actually see if that works. Uh, who is our engineer? Sparty, you are the engineer, so you go ahead and head on out here. Let go. Turn on your lights. Uh, no, you're going the wrong way. You are an engineer and not a pilot after all. Do not break the solar panels. Okay. Let's see if you can actually grab this or if I'm going to need to uh, do some sort of a config edit here. Grab, sweet. Now we're going to place this here. Uh, actually grab it and place it again. And then we are going to, uh, I guess we'll have to fix that when the time comes. So now we've done one of these. Now let's grab this. I really, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these solar panels away. I'm, I'll put them all away for the time being. I just don't want you breaking those things. <laughs> that would be bad. Okay, we've attached one here. Uh, we need to attach one here now. Uh, right here, I guess that's good enough. You are so happy. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm in space doing work. And now, I still don't know how these work, but I found if I just go group plus, that didn't work. Maybe they're too far from each other. Honestly, don't know. The other ones just worked when I when I made one group plus and one group minus. Uh, okay, that one worked. And then if we go to group plus on this one, that one just magically worked. I need to probably look up the uh, the how this thing works. Um, so let's go to group one. Let's go back to group zero on this guy. Go back to group zero on this guy. And then if we make this guy group one, in theory, he should attach, but he doesn't. There's absolutely no reason it shouldn't work, other than the fact that I really don't know what how, how you do these things yet. Disable, enable. Yeah, seems like these struts should just magically connect to each other, but they're not. So let's go ahead and bring that battery, the, these back out. We'll live with just these ones right now, and I'll look up... Uh, what happens. But anyway, we've got 10 days before the window. We have absolutely nothing to do until we get to that window. So uh, let's go ahead and just fast forward to it. Okay, it is time. I fixed the auto strutter issue. I think the struts automatically won't block a door. That's the only thing I can figure. When I put the struts here to here, which is kind of cockeyed, but it's going to be the best I can do, um, then everything was fine. When I put it in front of the door, it just would not connect no matter what I did. So we are going to control from here. The reason is these are the engines that are firing, <laughs> and we want them to fire so that... Um, so that everything goes in the right direction. <laughs> uh, and this is this is rigidly connected to these guys, whereas everything else on this ship is just kind of cockamamie connected to them. Um, we have a half hour before the window, before the, the ideal window, which means we're basically in the window now. So we need to, on either this or next orbit, and it's probably going to be next orbit, so I'm just going to, well, you know what, I'll, I'll, make, the, I'll make the node and we'll see what happens here. And you'll note I, I didn't go to my Midmus base to do this. Um, and the reason is... Oh yeah, we're, we're fine as far as that's concerned. The reason is, is it's really not that much extra to, um, to go to Midmus first as it is to just go to Duna. So I've decided to just go to Duna. And there's our... Basically, that's perfect right there. It's in a minute and 50 seconds. I'm going to hit the gas here with the fear that the whole ship is going to break apart. 
I was afraid of that. Oh, they're being blocked by the solar panels. That's cute. So we're going to put our solar panels away. I'm surprised they didn't sh destroy the solar panels. Two minutes and 57 seconds, which is just perfect. So let's go now. This is not the prettiest uh, ship here. I'm actually going to turn off the torque on this and on this. So we don't want this screwing up the rest of the thing. I could be firing this engine, but I don't want to. It scares me. That is funny that the solar panels blocked those without being destroyed by them. I, I prefer the solar panels blocking them, to be honest, because I kind of want those solar panels <laughs> available to use later. A little than, more than a little concerned with our usage of fuel, but really, once we get to Duna, we can use aero braking to stop us. So as long as we have a couple hundred Delta V, which it looks like we're going to have about a couple hundred Delta V, um, this should be fine. One huge problem is uh, Kerbal Engineer assumes we're going to toss this thing, so it, its estimate of how much Delta V we have left is, is actually low. There's not much we can do about it, we just have to deal with it. Okay, we're almost there, 30 meters per second left. And that ideally is going to do it. Let's delete this maneuver node, and we have an encounter with Duna. Um, we are going to leave it exactly like this. <laughs> um, we are going to eject from Kerbin, and we are going to fix our Duna encounter here. We're going to do all the fixing at the descending node. And that fixing includes an aero brake. So first of all, let's... Uh, the descending node is at negative 0.1. So if we go plus 10, then it, that's basically zero. We can actually watch it here. 10 is going to be too much. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty flat there. Actually, it's too high. Somewhere around there looks good. Then we're going to need to radial or prograde. Radial changes it this much. Prograde changes it this much, which is more. So we're going to use prograde, or actually retrograde in theory. And then we are going to come in here. We need to uh, arrow break. Now, there's no way we're going to hit this exact, but it's it's a good goal. Sadly, I don't think we can we can actually do it better than this. I don't think we can actually do it this well. Um, but uh, then once we, once we get that fixed and we actually get in the sphere of influence, once we're out here, we'll turn on the trajectories mod and get a nice aero break. Now, this is 16 meters per second. We have 373, which is probably closer to 250 or 300. But that is enough. You guys are on your way. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit backspace to open up all the solar panels, and then I'm going to manually close these ones. And I have a question here. Map resource overlay... Uh, resource map. Let's enable the overlay. And is this carbonite? Logarithmic scale we like. Colored. What does colored do? Colored makes it white. That works for me. Let's, uh, let's make our low cutoff of carbonite 5. There you go. This is the carbonite on Duna. Now, this is a little cheaty because we've never been to Duna before, so I really shouldn't know this data. But honestly, I don't care. I don't care enough to uh, to to want to send a, a ship out and all that stuff. Um, it bothers me that my tooltips aren't working because I would like to know the latitude and longitude of this area. But this should be very equatorial, and it's also in this canyon, which is pretty freaking sweet. <laughs> to be honest. Looks like there's no carbonite on the poles, which isn't a big deal. Um, I really like the idea of landing in this canyon. Um, I am like it enough to, to almost just say we're going to do it. And the next thing to be ejected is our satellite, which is actually needs to be renamed to Duna Satellite. And on his next orbit, we are going to eject him, and obviously it's going to be closer to this here. We can figure it's going to be what the what the station did. Oh, there we go. 
I don't know how much this burn's going to be, but it's about half of our fuel, less than half of our fuel, so it's going to be, we'll say, 15 seconds. So we'll go down to seven. About oh, 20 seconds, it says. And done. Or at least close. Just thrusting forward a little bit until we get there. Then I'm going to focus. I didn't do this with the other ship because, oops, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I want to focus view on this guy. There we go. Focus view. Now, I didn't do this with the other guy because he was so touchy. But this guy, I can burn. Oops, nope, that's already too much. Let's go ahead and turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit brighter and you never come around. I don't know if that's the right words. Uh, let's go ahead and there we go. Get that nice and nice and vertical on the uh, north-south there. And we don't have an ascending node or a descending node. Do we have a moon encounter or something? We don't have a moon encounter. We just have an ejection from the system. So we just have to pick here. Let's, how about right here? That basically gets the satellite in the right place. <laughs> right there, and then a little bit like that. We'll we'll burn the satellite like that when the time comes, and then he's going to uh, his orbit is crazy. I actually think if we come in a little bit south, I'm trying to figure out a way that we can come in higher and swoop around Duna so that we come around and and get close to this orbit. Yeah, it's just not going to work because we're coming in from this way. There's we need to be coming in from this way, so it's just not going to work. Not a big deal. And then this will allow us to come in and arrow break a little bit. We might even be able to swing around uh, Ike, but I don't think it'll matter, to be honest. This is going to be a tiny little burn. I'll work it out when we get there. If, if all else fails, we can get it up next to our station and use the tug to refuel it uh, if we run out of fuel. Um, okay, well, this is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you're excited about getting these guys to Duna. Next time, we're going to expand our Minma space. I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to do that right now. Let's go ahead and go to the Space Center. Because I have a ton of money and a ton of science. We're going to buy this upgrade. It's half of what we have in the bank. Womp. Hey, that's the research and uh, tech facility that I remember. Let's go ahead and go in there. Now, I've unlocked a lot of things. Um, I want a couple things. In particular, I do want the bigger parts. But I want this senior docking port. So we're just going to research that and not even think about it. I might be able to actually clear out the entire tech tree. Um, is there anything else I really want? I want more probe cores. So we're just going to research that. We're just going to research that. Might as well get the science. Doesn't hurt. Big rover wheels. Yeah, why not? Uh, more science. Sure. Uh, bigger battery. The RTG. That's not a big deal. Um, sure. Why not those? Uh, ion engines. I have no plans on using ions. Uh, another probe core? Sure, we'll research that. More plane parts? Yeah, we're going to be building planes. Uh, more plane parts? Yeah, we're going to be building planes. Nuke engines? Okay, fine. I I like nuke engines. Uh, nano lathing gets us the electromagnet. I never use it, so I'm not going to research it unless it's the last thing left. I've only got 294 science left. Um, I Basically, I want this, and I want this, and... I want this, actually, uh, for 160, I'll just get this. And uh, I'm going to want this bigger landing gear, but I can't quite get it, so not a big deal. Um, really, once, we, once we're once we done with Duna, we'll probably have enough science to, to unlock the rest of the stuff, at least, you know, the couple here that, that we need. We could also probably upgrade this guy for 875, which will get us just under 2 mil, and it will allow us to see asteroids. But honestly, that's not a huge deal. Uh-huh. Aha! Uh -huh. So now we're just waiting for these guys to get to Duna, and as I said, I am going to make my Minmus base, and or I'm going to expand, I should say, my Minmus base. And if you look here, actually, at this contract, we got a build a new surface outpost on Minmus. Uh, it's got a power and antenna, docking port, no big deal. Five five more Kerbals. Um, it's also going to have that senior docking port on the top of it, and the idea is. Uh, it's going to bring its own ship, <laughs> its own refueling ship, and that ship is going to be able to come in and land on top of that senior docking port. And 
it'll just land there, automatically refuel, undock, and take off and head back to the uh, to the station. Um, it's fun to be able to do that. I like it. <laughs> so I hope you're looking forward to that. I'm definitely looking forward to doing it. I am Fifth Horseman, and I will, as always, talk at you later.